What's up, Weekend Warriors? Jacob Keen here, research analyst at Hensler Financial, trying to show you how to put some bang in your buck on another edition of Casual Finance Friday. Get down, baby! If you're currently on your second bag of Cheetos and haven't left the couch or your cartoons for hours, listen up. I'm gonna keep you from letting your investments go up in smoke. Whoa, bro, you're harshing my buzz. No, you need to hear this. The weed business has hit the big time and investors are in a mania over the opportunities. Let's take some time to look at the state of the industry, the speculative nature of most investments in this space and where I think rational investments remain. Marijuana has been illegal in the United States at the federal level for over four decades. However, this tide appears to be turning. With 33 states that have now legalized medical marijuana and 10 states in Washington, D.C. have legalized recreational use. Recent elections in November of 2018 saw Michigan approve recreational use and Utah and Missouri approve medical use. Using California, a state which has legal recreational use as a case study, is informative to the timeline for potential federal legalization. In 2003, a medical use bill was successful, although in 2010, the proposition for recreational use failed, it passed in 2016. If we look to the map of medical legality, we see right now medical use represents 350 electoral votes. That's more than enough to win a popular election. If we use a similar timeline as California, let's say three election cycles or 12 years, then we arrive at some federal form of legality by 2030. I don't see this as ambitious, but perhaps a base case. And then we have our northern neighbors, okay? They embarked upon federal legalization in October of 2018. This has seen several of the larger cannabis growers rise to the forefront of investor risk appetite. However, I would not recommend just blindly throwing your money into this market like a Wayne Gretzky wrist shot. There is a lot of nuance here and a big void between investment thesis of growing sales and the actual fundamentals and regulation in this market. In 2018, Canadian medical marijuana sales were estimated around 600 million. Estimates for recreational sales from October 17th through the end of the year are for 700 million. This is expected to ramp to 5 billion per year over the next few years. What we are seeing now is a significantly undersupplied market that may not catch up for another 18 months. However, this demand shock could be met with a supply glut as the top five growers alone should have production online in the next two years that is greater than most demand projections. While oils and edibles are not recreationally legal in Canada yet and are expected to be approved in 2019, these categories may not be enough to balance the market in the end. Just looking to the top growers like Canopy, Afria, Aurora, Kronos, and Organigram, their 2020 sales estimates total 4.9 billion. This compares to total valuations at 41 billion, which puts their price to sales at 8.4 in 2020, exactly the time that we would expect saturation. Compare that to energy drinks, like in Monster Energy, which is growing sales at 30% in 2013 and traded at only four times sales. Very few of these growers have demonstrated margins anywhere near a company like this, or even actual profitability for that matter. While I do acknowledge there are some growers out there cheaper than others, I think there's a smarter way to play it. But before getting into that, let me brush upon some of the tangential cannabis companies and my brief thoughts. I've seen companies in the market from hydroponic supplies to cannabis-related apparel, to genetic plant engineering, to cannabis breathalyzer technology, and everything in between. I have yet to come across a compelling valuation and feel they are being bid up in a speculative frenzy due to association. There have been strides made in the therapeutic space with GW Pharmaceuticals getting FDA approval for a cannabinoid treatment for childhood epilepsy, as well as Cara working on pain relief opiate alternatives. Further development in cannabinoid therapeutic applications have the unique benefit of intellectual property in an otherwise commoditized cannabis space. I like to think of these as biotech firms and do not see them as cannabis companies. Now for the real opportunity, and you may be disappointed, but hear me out. In 2018, U.S. Recreation recreational marijuana sales were estimated at almost $10 billion. That is in a market with very little access to capital, limited to cash transactions, and no traditional banking. It's all relatively inefficient with small scale and limited access. California missed its marijuana tax revenue target in 2018, and this has largely been attributed to costs and efficiencies in a still thriving black market. Assuming this is just a hiccup and we do reach federal legalization, the small players of today in what is potentially a $60 billion market in the US are poised to get crushed. 
Big tobacco, big beer, heck, even the Coca-Colas of the world have the infrastructure, distribution networks, lobbying power, and branding to bring cannabis to the masses. They have been relatively silent until lately, that's with good reason. It will be hard for producers to differentiate their products in this environment, and until privately owned retail stores are allowed to operate, there's very little value add for a scale consumer products producer. This is also not a recipe for immense profits for the current producers, unless the market is liberated to some extent, but that may be the exact instance we see big tobacco and beer swoop in. What has happened is we have seen Canada used as a petri dish for some of these firms to work out any hiccups they may have on a small scale. These companies don't have access to US cannabis investments due to interstate commerce law, but have taken some bites out of operators in Canada. Call them munchies as you have it. Altria, the maker of Marlboro cigarettes, took a $1.8 billion stake in Kronos Group, a cannabis firm in Toronto focused on marijuana chemistry and industrial cannabinoid extraction. Constellation Brands, the maker of Corona, also took on a $4 billion investment in canopy growth. The chips are starting to fall as other companies have gotten involved and craft cannabis producers have taken notice. And this is only the beginning. If you extrapolate to a legal and more market-driven cannabis environment in the US, you're talking tens of billions in market share up for grabs. The global market could be worth nearly $200 billion. These consumer businesses, especially tobacco and beer, have the regulatory expertise and legal prowess to navigate through this future and maybe even become active proponents in the movement to legalize. The small investments are the signal, and the future is a way off, but there has not been a better entry point into these businesses for investors in a long time. These tobacco and beer companies trade at price to earnings as low as half that of the broad market, and with massive dividend yields. The market appears oblivious to this growth opportunity. To me, it makes the most sense to own a stable, dividend-paying, low-volatility consumer stable company with the ability to turn the growth corner over the next decade and you could get paid to wait so don't shoot for the high flyer keep both feet on the ground be patient and reap the retirement rewards this has been jacob keen research analyst at hensler financial signing off on a casual finance friday thank you